Hi there, this is Dr. Evan Osar with the Institute for Integrative Health and Fitness Education. Welcome to this edition of Integrative Movement Insider. I hope this day is finding you well. This is Tuesday to Anatomy Geeks. Obviously, we're still in lockdown, and it seems like we're going to be in lockdown for quite a few more weeks. So it's important to us that we continue to educate, empower, and inspire you to be the leader for your community. Because again, your clients are on lockdown as well. They need a leader just like you to help keep them motivated, inspired, and empowered to keep their health up because that's the most important thing besides our mindset that we can take care of right now and take advantage of this time of isolation to work on and improve. On a last week's edition of Two Anatomy Geeks, so again, we're on, we just finished part two. This Saturday, we have part three coming up. I'll put the link next to this video or wherever you're watching it. This is Facebook Live. So I'll put the link next to this video right here so you can sign up for our next week's episode or this week's episode, part three. But last week on Two Anatomy Geeks in this four part series, we've been discussing shoulder issues and why some of our clients have chronic neck issues related to their shoulder complex and more specifically, their levator scapula and upper trapezius. Now, one of the things we see in a lot of our clients that have chronic tension in their neck is they don't actually have shoulders that are up here like this. Obviously, some of your clients do, so you have to address that appropriately. But what we're seeing more frequently in the industry is clients that are coming in with their shoulders down like this. And you see a big slope in my shoulders. And this was my exact problem or one of my problems that I had because I'd been using the cue and had been cued by every physical therapist I went to, every chiropractic rehab specialist I went to, everything I read online was saying, hey, everybody's got shoulders up here. So they were teaching me to lift up, squeeze down and back. And I created this huge slope to my shoulders, overstretching my upper trapezius, putting my scapula in downward rotation and also slightly anteriorly rotated as well. So what happens is that creates a lot of tension in the neck. These muscles, remember the upper trapezius and levator scapula are trying to bring the shoulders back up. But again, if your more powerful muscles, your scapular depressors, like latissimus dorsi, that's what we'll talk about this week coming up on the third episode of Two Anatomy Geeks, this special four part series. If that muscle is dominant and pulling the scapula down and back, which it is in a lot of our clients, what happens is you create a lot of tension on the brachial plexus, those nerves that are coming out of the neck and down to innervate the upper extremity. So one of the things we talked about is the strategy to teach your client how to first cue themselves into better alignment and then to load better alignment. And this is the number one pattern we teach our clients. Once we teach, teach them how to release and then teach them how to cue into a better position. So the cue we use is a long spine from the back of the head and then suspending the rib cage and shoulder blades. So the shoulders are more even across right across the collarbones. Now we want to load the client up with a carry pattern. So why is a carry pattern so powerful or so important for our clients? Because all our clients, the majority of them, I should say, will do some carrying throughout the day. They're going to carry their children. They're going to carry bags of groceries, especially now. They're going to carry heavy boxes. They're going to carry a heavy load and then use their opposite hand, or they should say their dominant hand, to open the car door, open the door, um, prepare food in their kitchen. So it becomes a very functional pattern for our clients. But again, most of our clients are just dropping their ribcage down, dropping their shoulder down, and wondering why they have so much chronic neck tension. So the carry pattern is, like I said, a very functional pattern for developing the upper trapezius as well as helping your client get rid of or avoid, I should say, some of that chronic neck tension and also address some of those chronic shoulder issues that come from that downwardly position of the scapula. So thank you for everybody that's jumped on. I appreciate you guys being on with us this morning and thank you for all the likes. If you do like this video and you like this information, feel free to forward it to your like-minded colleagues. So how do we set up the carry pattern so that it does what we want it to do and doesn't lead and perpetuate some of the issues our clients already have. Again, it starts with a setup position. So I have two 35 pound plates here and that's about the load I use. Maybe I go up to 45s or 50s, but that's a max load I use. And for most of your clients, they're using loads that are much too heavy. I'll demonstrate what that looks like here in a moment. But here's how we set our clients up for success. So again, it starts with a nice long spine position as if they're being pulled up from the backside of their head and neck. They suspend and stack the rib cage. They stay open and long across the collarbones. Then they hinge to grab the weight. And then they bring the weight up. And now I have the same exact shoulder position I had before. So again, that, that nice wide collarbone position. I keep space underneath my arms and I stay nice and stacked if you look at me from the side. What happens for a lot of our, their, or our clients is because they've been queued up, just like we've all been queued up 
chest up, squeeze down and back, and pack those shoulders. But again, watch the slope of my shoulders. Look how slope my shoulders are, and I feel incredible tension and, and discomfort in my neck. So this is an awful position. So now I need to reset myself. So again, it's a long spine, stack and suspend that rib cage over top of the pelvis, hinge, grab the weight, come up, and now I'm set up for my carry pattern. So long across the collarbones, wide across the shoulders, and again from behind, same idea. Nice and wide across the shoulder blades. The scapula are nice and stabilized in upward rotation and posterior tilt, and now I can do my carry patterns. And then somebody, somebody asked me, what about single arm carries? No problem. If I put one load down, it's the same idea. Long across the collarbones or wide across the collarbones, long spine, stack that rib cage, and again, the scapula and shoulders should stay in the same position. And that's how you really teach your client how to carry appropriately to set them up for success, to teach them a very functional pattern they're going to use in every single day life and avoid a lot of the chronic issues that lead to chronic levator scapular trigger points as well as neck tension and even tension headaches. So this is Dr. Evan Oso with the Institute for Integrative Health and Fitness Education. I hope it served you and helped you be more aware of how the scapula functions and the muscles on the scapula, some of the muscles on the scapula also impact head and neck function as well. So if you haven't signed up, I'm gonna put the link next to this video, sign up for this free four, four part series. And again, we're giving you our best content, the content that we actually share only prior to this in our Integrative Movement Specialist Certification Program, which is our year long intensive where people pay us seven grand for that program. This is the information they learn that we're sharing with you. So that way you stay educated, empowered and inspired and can get out there and lead your communities. Even though we can't see our clients one-on-one, -on -one, we can still do a lot of great things. You can do a lot of great things with your clients in the online environment if you understand and apply this information, which I know you will. And like I said, please feel free to leave your comments like you're, you're doing, big thumbs up, like this video, share it with your like-minded colleagues who would also benefit from this information. And we look forward to seeing you next time. I look forward to seeing you on Two Anatomy Geeks this coming Saturday. Saturday, 9 a.m. Central Time. Again, I'll put that link in the video and we look forward to seeing you then. Thank you so much. I appreciate you and all you do for your community. And if there's anything we can do to help support you in your role as a leader, please reach out and let us know. Take care. Happy Tuesday. We'll see you next time at Two Anatomy Geeks.